I want to talk about for a brief while staying on a sinking ship. Staying on a sinking ship. How do you stay on a sinking ship? How do you remain faithful to that which encapsulates your fears? How do you remain loyal to something or someone that could potentially drown you? This is the tension that we find in our text and the circumstances around or that surrounds the protagonist of our periphery. What a turn of events for a man to go from such promise and purpose to now begin the shackled on a, on a ship in a storm. What a plot twist to go from sitting at the feet of uh, someone of, be of the best and the brightest to standing on the edge of sure disaster. What a storyline to go from the blessing of being Saul to the burden of being Paul. Paul, the main character of our text, finds himself in a storm. But to make matters worse, the ship was falling apart and it was on its way to sinking. Of Paul, the main character of our text, whether we recognize it or not, we've all found ourselves in life storms, right. tossed seas, and we found ourselves smack dab in the middle of a sinking ship. Yes. But I've come to discover sinking ships have a way of showing us things that we wouldn't have seen otherwise. Mm. Sinking ships will reveal to us who was with us for the journey and who was with us for the ride. I don't know if you recognize it or not, but there are some people who are along for the ride because of where you are going and the vehicle by which you can take them. Awesome. They are with you as long as the money train is running on time. They are with you as long as your name still has influence. They will ride you as long as you're sailing placid and pristine waters. Awesome. But as soon as the journey gets difficult and as soon as the roads get rough, and as soon as the going gets tough, that's when you will see who was along for the journey and who was along for the ride. Awesome. Sinking ships will also help us to appropriate or allocate dead weight. Right. But when you're on a sinking ship, you have to learn how to shed the material and keep the meaningful. A psalmist Erica Badu says it like this, a bag lady. <laughs> uh, you gonna hurt your back Come on now. Uh, carrying all them bags <laughs> like that I guess no one ever told you that all you must hold on to uh -huh. is you in 2015 I'm encouraging everybody to join me in asking themselves one question every morning is this bag really worth it uh, is it worth your family? Is it worth the money? Is it worth the fussing and the fighting? In fact, can you help me just preach this sermon? Look at your neighbor and tell them, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Here's my thesis. There is a blessing in broken pieces. There is a testimony in your tempest. Uh, there is salvation on your sinking ship uh, when you hold to the word of the Lord. See, I don't know about you, but there have been times in my life where things were unstable, they were chaotic and topsy-turvy, and the only thing that I could hold on to was the word of the Lord. Right. God's word has a way of turning things around. It can turn a mess into a miracle. It can turn a burden into a blessing. It can turn a test into a testimony. It can turn a stumbling block into a stepping stone. God's word calms my fears. God's words can do what doctors can't do. God's words can do what lawyers can't do. God's yeah. word can do what loan officers can't do. Awesome. And if you can hold on, if you can't hold on to nothing else, I want to encourage you that the grass withers and the flower fades, right. but the word of God endures forever. I'm simply trying to admonish you to hold on to his word. Because his word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. But what happens when the word requires you to stay on a sinking ship? At times, why does God require for us to remain connected to something that has the potential to kill us? The first thing that I want to lift up uh, is your protection has already been promised. Uh, here in our text, Paul tries to advise the soldiers on the ship to stay with the ship. 
In other words, stay with that which has brought you this far. Let me pause parenthetically and interject homiletically just because you find yourself in a storm doesn't mean that you're on the wrong path. It doesn't mean that you're headed in the wrong direction. It doesn't mean that you're on the wrong ship. But it could be that the ship is not there to hinder you, but the ship is there to help you. Or could it be that the ship, it could be a shelter from you in the times of storm? Could it be that it's there to protect you from the boisterous waves and the howling winds? Right. Don't despise the ship just because you ended up in a storm, but use it, use what God has given you and make the best of a bad situation. The reason why Paul encourages them to stay with the ship is because of who was on the ship. Can I help many of you to understand the reason why you've made it this far is not because of your uh, education, it's not because of your contacts, it's not because of your ability to network, it's not because of your career, but it was because who was on your ship. Some of us had our praying grandmother on our ship. Others of us may have had a close friend who held us accountable on our ship. But whoever it was, it was them that was on our ship that kept us this far. And it was because we had their presence and their prayers. And likewise, the reason why the soldiers and the prisoners were still alive was because Paul was on board. It was because of his presence and his purpose as to why they were still alive. The Bible says that the angel spoke to Paul and encourages him that you can't die here because you have an appointment to keep. Uh, that's a good place to pause and tell somebody, don't get frustrated where you are right now. Right. Uh, don't throw in the towel where you are right now because you have an appointment to keep. You have an appointment to see what eyes have not seen and what ears have not heard. And neither has it entered into the hearts of man what God has in store for you. Number two, here it is. It's possible to commune in a crisis. Yeah, that's why you need to stay on a sinking ship. It's, it's possible to commune in a crisis. I've come to discover that even though we find and even though we have our appointments, that still doesn't negate the fact that we still have to deal with crisis. Right. The text says that while they were dealing with the storm, Paul notices they neglected self-care. Paul says, essentially, you have not eaten in 14 days, and you've got to take care of yourself even though you find yourself in a storm. Now, notice his concern is not with the storms, but those who are going through the storm. Right. In other words, he says, I care more about you than what you're going through. He cared so much until he decided to administer the Eucharist right there at their point of need. See, their need wasn't shelter at that point. Their need wasn't land at that point. But their need was someone who could take time and break bread with them as they went through the storm. As preachers and ministers of the gospel, our job is not to promise houses or cars or land, but our job is to feed the people right where they are. Yes. Through the breaking of the bread, he shows there can still be community even in distressing times like these. I want to encourage those in the room, there can still be community with problems of injustice and racial inequality. There can still be community with issues of marginalization and oppression that is continually being muted by a capitalist society. And I want you to know that there can still be community. As he breaks bread with the soldiers and prisoners, he's essentially saying, we are in this together. I want to encourage again some other young preachers who feels as if you're in this by yourself. You can make it if you give God your heart and your friend a helping hand. You can survive the storm because you're not in this by yourself. Number three, and I'm done, here it is. God can take what's left and make it last. Right. Now that's why you need to stay on the sinking ship. God can take what's left and make it last. If you will allow me to tell the story and use my spiritual imagination, as my pastor would say, the Bible says, after some time on the sea, facing a tempestuous wind in the dark all by themselves, 
with no ability to call for hope, the sun rises on a crew and passengers who are scared, alone, and distressed. Paul and the crew seem the, stone, the stern literally tearing apart, and the ship sinking tells the people, for those who can swim, go first. And those who can take what's left, hold on to it for dear life. And Paul instructs the people to make their way to safety on broken pieces. Right. Now here is what blesses me about the broken planks. Because even though they were broken, they could still be used. I yes. see the reason why you can stay on the ship is so God can show you what may be, may, what may be man's problem. In reality, is really God's problem in uncertainty. God has the proclivity to take our problems and turn them into planks. Unpaid tuition may be a problem, but the plank uh, is, when, is when you float to and testify that my God shall supply all of my needs. Yeah. Not knowing what's next after graduation may be a problem, but take the plank and allow it to carry you to acknowledge that the Lord in all of your ways and he will direct your path. Cancer may be a problem, but catch a plank and remember that he was wounded for your transgressions. Yeah. He was uh, bruised for your iniquity. When you find yourself in one of life's problems, just know a plank is on the way. And all you've got to do is ride the wave. See, when people people wonder why you're smiling with such issues in your life, you can just tell them I'm riding the wave. When people say, how can you stay strong even on a sinking ship? You can just tell them I'm riding the wave because the waves are pushing me to my destiny. When you ride the wave, you can love those who hate you. When you ride the wave, you can bless those who curse you. You can pray for those who persecute you. When you ride the wave, you can make it on broken pieces. You can make it when you have no money. You can make it when you don't have any mentors. You can make it when you don't have a master's degree. In fact, the songwriter said, be not dismayed. Or whatever betides, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. Can you hold, can you help me close this sermon and tell your neighbor, ride the wave, ride, ride the wave. I know it's difficult, but ride the wave. I know you may have to deal with some problems, but ride the wave. I know you may have to go back home to some issues and circumstances, but ride the wave. Thank you.